Scope is one of the hardest things to manage in game dev, so I decided to make a list that'll break it down into factors for you. I first decided to search on YouTube to see if any factors like that had already been made. I'm sure there's a lot of great breakdowns out there. I can't wait to research. So everyone's talking about scope in terms of their own experience or talking extremely broadly or generally about it. This is not good. Without a breakdown of what scope is from all the angles, how are people supposed to plan ahead for it? I hate it when people say scope now. That's just me. Appalling. Disgusting. Outrageous. Like, you can't just say a word and pretend it means something when the concept is too complicated for that. Oh my god. I gotta calm down. Okay, let's continue. UNACCEPTABLE! Uh -huh. My goal with this video is to fix this messy situation where scope feels impossible to get a good idea of, much less plan for. So here are my five factors to consider when measuring the scope of your game. As always, I'm going to add a reference guide in the description that will give you a quick visual indicator of all the factors that I'm going to talk about in this video, so you can use it later. Great place to start is by looking at the main elements of the game. Don't go too into the details here, there's no way it's going to be perfectly accurate anyway. Just look at the main elements of your game and get a good idea of what those are. Let's use the game that I'm making as an example. From start to finish, my game will start with the main menu. It'll then go into a storybook cinematic. There'll be some gameplay, another cinematic, more gameplay, and then an ending cinematic. So the main elements of my completed game are going to be those storybook cinematics and the gameplay itself. I can plot all this out and loosely determine how long it'll take me to complete each of these main elements. The problem is, that's where most people stop, but there's a whole lot more to it than that. Let's continue to the next factor. The current skills factor describes everything you have to learn in order to make your game. To estimate it, we go through those main elements that we already determined, and then we see, for each one, how would you make that happen? Have you done it before? Is it completely new to you? Or is it somewhere in between? In my game, I have no experience in the medium that I want to use, Grease Pencil, to make my storybook cinematics. Additionally, I don't know how to make large levels before in Godot. I've never done that. So that's another thing I'm going to have to learn how to do. So in short, this factor says learning takes time, so it's included in the scope. Games often change while they're being developed, and this is more true for some than others. This factor describes how concrete your plans are. Is everything going to look exactly as you planned it, or are some things going to shift around and change? For this factor, we go through all of the main elements, and we give them a score from 0 to 10, just to get an idea. How concrete is this going to be? Is it exactly as I envision it? And how much iteration is it going to take me to get exactly what I want? Usually gameplay is what's going to change the most and be the least concrete. Any elements with high scores, just keep that in mind, that's going to add to the scope. Expected polish is the standard that you hold yourself to while making your game. If you're not satisfied with just a passing grade in different areas like art and programming, then that's going to increase the scope of your game as you try to fine-tune these things and make them even better. It's also worth saying that some of the best games have low levels of polish in certain areas of the game, sometimes on purpose. So polish is not a necessity for a good game. To get an idea of how this factor impacts the game, we go through the main areas of game dev. Visuals, programming, art, music, things like that and we give ourselves a polish score. This is, it's not just a passing grade. It doesn't just function, it doesn't work. It's better, it's better somehow. 
if you have a score like that for any of those areas, then that's going to impact the scope of your game. The marketing factor is kind of self-explanatory, but it kind of falls through the cracks a lot of times. You'd be surprised that even like game jam games still have some sort of level of marketing. You're going to at least make some sort of social media post showing your game, or you'll share it to some friends or something like that. All the effort that you put into those posts, making the logo for the game, making a trailer if you're putting it on Steam, all of those requirements to put things on Steam and things like that, that's all marketing factor. And that will impact the scope, so it's important to consider. And then there's the people who step outside of the bare minimum. They're not just making a Steam page with a trailer. They're trying to get the word out there for their game. For my game, I made a separate YouTube channel, and I've been posting little shorts of the gameplay and how it's progressing to try to attract players instead of on this channel where I attract people who are creative and like to make games. And that's how I'm going to try and attract some attention toward my game. But of course, it takes time, so it should be included in the scope. Okay, so now I want to talk about reducing scope. Oh, by the way, let me know in the comments if there's another factor that I didn't talk about that you'd want to bring my attention to. Usually when people talk about reducing scope, they talk in general and they talk about cutting things from the game and things like that. Armed with the factors that I just described, there are other ways we can reduce the scope. You can consider the skill factor and change the main elements of your game to be more in line with what you already know how to do. You can increase game concreteness by researching what other games do or making a small prototype. You can lower the level of expected polish and make a game that doesn't take itself too seriously but could still be a great game. You can reduce your efforts in marketing if you're okay with less exposure in certain areas. All of these things can significantly impact the scope of your game without gutting things and changing the game in a major way. I hope this video helped you. Please consider giving a like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Good luck making your games!